our large institutions and our funding structures. Mm -hmm. Who are these institutions and who are they be being funded by? And why is this perpetuating? I mean, I think that, that this necessary radical disruption has to happen, but it's bigger than that. There's a paradigm shift happening. We are successful. It's happening all over. It's the, the marginalized must be the mainstream. We, we see it everywhere, and it's on us to change what is big. Because what I see every day is enormous. And I feel like part of it is, how much can we change huge institutions and huge structures, many of which are no longer successful? Arena stage is a rare one. I mean, we really, look at, look at how hard it is for the president of this country. I mean, we need new structures, and the change is in the grassroots. If we're gonna grow a new garden or a new rainforest, it's right at the ground. And we have to empower that ground. That's what must be funded, supported, you know, that, to me, that's where I think we should focus our energy. Can you, are you all right there? Uh, yeah, <clears throat> Amy Try Mueller, it. Playwrights Foundation. Um, apropos to that, for me, um, I mean, just uh, in terms of this conversation, Bright Spots, I, I suddenly realized that um, uh, there's a high school in, in Oakland that has an incredible theater program, and that's Oakland Tech, Oakland Technical mm -hmm. High School. Oakland Tech is an urban high school in, in one of the <clears throat> most dangerous cities in the country. And um, they have uh, a, an incredibly diverse population. I think it's something like 70% uh, African American. And uh, there's an incredible high school theater program there that, are, uh, that and they went to um, Edinburgh this last year with Blood in the Brain, I think? Or maybe it was, they did Hamlet. Uh, but uh, but, but blood in the brain? it was blood in the brain. Yeah, Naomi Zuka's yeah, it was our yeah. Naomi Zuka's version of Hamlet that was written with uh, Camposanto Intersection and California Shakespeare. So there's um, and I had an opportunity. Uh, I only suggest that was I uh, we did a reading of uh, uh, Chisa Hutchinson's play on Monday night, and one of the students from Oakland Tech was in it. Mm -hmm. And I drove him home, and I got to talk to him and. Um, this is a student who would not be doing theater if he wasn't at Oakland Tech uh, within that particular program. He's, he's a wonderful, wonderful, new, bright spot. Could you name the teacher also, the person? Jessa Berkner. Yeah. Jessa Berkner. I want to say, too, Jess Berkner is a really good friend of mine. And she, when she first started working there, she produced a videotape uh, at Oakland Tech. And she came down to our new play festival and not only performed for me in one of our readings, but she became an associate artist. And we set up a video monitor in our, um, in our patrons room and we played continuously her videotape from the Bay Area about what they were doing at Oakland Tech. Wow. Yeah. And, and I, I just want to say that, uh, you'll get your chance in the breakout, sorry. I just want to say that the, um, the uh, Oakland Tech, the playwriting part of that program, I'm going to just do commercials for the guy who said he didn't know anybody in the room because that was started by Gary Hill as well. So oh, there you go. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. All right, Gary. I, I have one more bright spot that I want to just shout out about, um, which is New Black Fest. Yeah. Well, yes. um, yeah. uh, awesome, mm -hmm. awesome. <laughs> All right, go. Mm -hmm. Chris? Go ahead, I talk oh, I would, um, it's kind of against, the, it's, it's against the current topic right now, but talking about under the radar again, and as a person who spent a lot of his early part of my career, uh, Trey Life at Rain Pan 43, in Edinburgh and in the international circuit, the, the constant, um, there's nothing but diversity in terms of cultural diversity in Europe. I mean, it's kind of an obvious statement, but in Edinburgh in particular, and at the venue we were at, Aurora Nova, um, uh, is immensely diverse in terms of all the different countries that were working there. But in, through that relationship, I got involved with a company in Toronto, so it's not in the States, but uh, called Volcano that just recently did a production called the Volcano, uh, the Africa Trilogy. Mm -hmm. And they brought together artists from all over the world together, from Africa, from Germany, from the states from, um, and everybody put together this three play cycle about the West perceptions of Africa. And um, there was an American playwright, a German playwright, American director, Swedish director, you know, there, and it was all different races, all different cultures, all put together. And I, it could only happen in Canada. I mean, it could only happen there because the, the, they don't have the paranoia, obviously, for, for now that we do. So the, the, just for instance, we, one of the things that we wanted to work with CTG coming out of the experience in Edinburgh was to work with a choreographer there named Hugh Strumgren, who actually got 
later commissioned by Philadelphia Live Arts to work with Philadelphia-based artists. And they went through that process, but one of the things that restricted it was the amount of work it would take to get the visa for this guy, for a small organization to get, you know, the, to put together the 70 page visa to get this guy over to work with. So there's, there's the, the festival market and the way that diversity is just a part of the blood of international festivals and of the way that festivals like the live arts, and I'm sure there are many other that I don't know about across the country, that the, the more established uh, companies could, I think, learn a lot from. So you're, you're pointing to, to one of the obstacles that we create here in our own country, which is this whole, the, the process, the bureaucracy of, of... Yeah, I mean, that's kind of, in this. some ways, it's a lazy excuse, what no, I'm saying. No, it's but, actually, but, I, I pointed out because we're like four blocks from the State Department, and <laughs> there are people there who call us all the time about interaction between the American theater and the, and the work they're doing at the State Department, and it's good to know I can go there and say, here, you know, focus on... Yeah, I mean, X, I guarantee you that Rachel, who's just a colleague who is constantly in that as well, there's just nothing but artists there that you'd love to collaborate with, you know? And, and I thought that is, mm -hmm. can these institutions also include that in the diversity conversation about actually expanding America's idea? Because in Canada, everybody's like, oh yeah, yeah, oh he's, you know, he's from Kenya and he's from mm -hmm. Cameroon and it was just there. Mm -hmm. They made it happen, but it's still, it's, it's, a, it's even a broader idea of diversity that I think is uh, possible here, especially in DC. <laughs> no, I don't know. Yeah. I, there is such energy coming off the circle at the moment. People really need to talk. And I'm going to jump to the breakouts now. We're, we piled a lot of information. Go ahead, Chris. Just, One what, more thing, and wanna, then we're going to jump into the breakouts. I just want to shout out something that I heard this morning. I, I, hope, it's, I hope it's cool with him. Um, Pete Miller, uh, in one of our breakouts earlier today, uh, as a board, mem a board member of William Mammoth, said, it's more important for us to accomplish our mission than to survive. And that blew my mind my mind from a board member saying that, um, and particularly where, uh, in, in a time when we're, we're encountering so many um, theaters whose mission is to make plays that reflect the United States of America or to make plays that reflect the city that they, um, that they serve and aren't actually doing that or re and are receiving funding on, that, on, on behalf of that, um, and putting that kind of language into their mission, uh, which they aren't necessarily following through on or believing in, it, it was thrilling to hear someone whose um, theater has a uh, not just a, a, an artistic mission, but a social justice sort of mission and a, so, a social exploration mission, uh, outwardly stating that it's, they have to follow through on that, even if, that's, even if it's at the, ex, the expense of them sort of no longer existing in their current form. I just thought that was stunning. All right, let's go get bright spots.